Portugal and France. All right, the big talking point is Cristiano, and we have to talk about him. I, I think we, we, we know the view. My view, I'll Did talk you like the tears after the penalty missed? How did you feel about the tears, the crying? The guy's showing some humanity. I, I, was on the, I was on the FC show that night, and they're all slaughtering him. I was like, dude, it's not like, it's not like Cristiano saying, hmm, I better go and like pretend I'm crying now, right? No, that was real. Whenever an athlete shows his true side, I don't think it's an issue. I think those Portugal people are saying, oh, but then the, the, his teammates are going to lose faith in him. I mean, first of all, his teammates are grown up. First of all, his teammates spend a lot of time with Cristiano. They know everything about Cristiano, yeah. good and bad. And it wouldn't surprise them that the guy's crying. I would assume so. He's right? cried before. Yeah, He's cried times, before. So it's not new. I, didn't, I didn't think it was a big deal. You, dude, you're showing some humanity. We, we, we're beyond the, the macho jock. Phase, I know, but right? it's not like if that was the penalty that ended the game and, and, and meant it was a defeat for Portugal. There was still a lot of minute to be played so what he didn't no, choose no, to but cry like, you know he you didn't choose this is what gets me no, no, the I man did not choose, choose to cry I know but still it's just like okay anyway I like I prefer people showing emotions thank you on the football pitch and everywhere else than not showing emotion the easy question is should Cristiano start because a lot of people say no Gonzalo Ramos blah 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 I'm, I'm going to quickly lay out my argument then you can tear yeah. it down Cristiano should start. He should start because this is the plan. This is what Roberto Martinez has set up. This is what they did throughout qualifying when yeah. they did really well, um, albeit they were kind of in a Muppet show group. But still, this is what you're set up to do. It's not like I have Marco Van Basten on the bench. I have Gonzalo true, Ramos on true, the bench. True, true, true. I am not a Gonzalo Ramos guy in the current iteration. I think his football is very different from Cristiano's. If the pieces around him are used to playing with Cristiano, then I don't see that you get the benefit of this adjustment suddenly playing with Gonzalo Ramos. You don't have time during a tournament to work on something different. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. finally, it's freaking Cristiano, okay? Do you want to invite the chaos and controversy and whatever else if you drop him again? I don't think so. No. I mean, uh, this debate is useless, right? Because we know he's going to start. So uh, we can talk mu as much as we want about it and what we would do if we were Roberto Martinez. It will start. Well, but yeah, the we, only thought, thing we, I thought, sorry, we thought he was going to start at the, at the World Cup, but then eventually, like, his god, the master of darkness, yeah, Fernando Santos, dropped him. We saw it them. coming a little bit. It's right. not coming this time. All right. But what I would say, the slight difference I have with you is that I just, I'm not sure he can play 90 minutes at this level, with this intensity, with the physicality that the French will put in that game. As we saw against Slovenia, where he misses that chance in the 90th minute, a chance that he scored like a thousand times in his career, that left foot one-on-one -on -one almost with Oblak, that he fluffs completely because I just don't think fitness-wise and sh in terms of sharpness, he was there then. Then he missed the penalty next extra time for the yeah. same reasons. So I think you start him, but maybe you take him off after 70 minutes just when to bring When you two or on. three goals up against France. No, but even if it's nil-nil-nil because he showed against Slovenia that the, 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 um, the, the thinking about, oh, he has to play the whole game because he can be decisive at any time, while he wasn't against Slovenia. No, yeah, I, I think we've gone past that. Um, I think you just have to measure him how he is, and you have to talk to him, and you say, Cristiano. And look, I, again, people say, oh, an athlete's always going to tell you that he's confident. And I say, no, I think actually we've moved beyond that. Yeah, I would say the maybe. 1980s are over. The guy knows his body really, really well. And you, Roberto Martinez, who's been coaching for 20-odd for years, you and him need to have this open dialogue. And based on what you perceive yeah. and what he tells you, you have to be brave to make that decision if you think he's losing something on the pitch physically. It yeah. goes even more so, doubly so, for, for Pepe, or Pep, as we like I to mean, call him yeah. now. Um, that nearly cost him the game. Yeah. How's Esco missed that? Uh, I don't know if it's cruel to just dump him now and bring in Gonzalo Ignacio or Antonio Silva hasn't been great when he has no, played. No, no, no. I do wonder, maybe Ignacio is a better match for the French strikers. Maybe, maybe for Turam, or maybe we've seen a back three at times with Roberto Martinez, even in this tournament. Maybe there's something there and that protects Pep much more, obviously, than if he just plays in a back, in a flat back four. With just who do you drop then? Well, that's, that's, the, that's the thing, because I think you need Palinha there. So maybe I think Rafael Leao was the one that was missing out the last time. I, as much as I love Rafael yeah, Leao. Thought, come on, like, that's not, so that's not be silly. Nick, well, no, I'm sorry, because if you drop Rafael Leao, he was if you drop before. Rafael Leao, sorry, but if you drop it, like, I know, but I'm, this is my message. Well, yeah, yeah, but like, exactly. You want to drop Rafael Leao from this team, Cristiano becomes the fastest player in your final third yeah. because you have little Bruno, yeah. little Bernie, who yeah. you know, runs a lot but doesn't run move very quickly. Sure. You have Cristiano, nearly 40 years of age. Yeah. Surely, 
look, France are going to sit deep, but surely you want the one-on-one -on -one threat behind that Rafael. Rafael, for me, is undroppable. If I want another, another little guy that can like run around and thread a pass, Portugal has plenty of them. No, true, true. What but they don't have is Rafael Leal. Well, yeah, but we saw Doku against Kunde, and that didn't work out. And maybe... It's a different player, different game. Doku and Leao are very similar players. They do sim very similar things. Bernardo Silva against Kunde and the skill set that Bernardo Silva has, different to Doku and Leao, which is very similar, might trouble Kunde a bit more because Kunde is all about pace and physicality. That's what he does. He's so not going to catch Rafael Leao. Come on, man. He caught Doku really well. He's not so going to catch Rafael Leao. Come on. Let's see. Come but on, but then on. I think he's good. And I think that matchup, whoever plays left against Kunde, Saliba against Cristiano, Mbappe against Joao Cancelo, who should play a right back, really, I think. Yeah. Even I, even Griezmann and Nuno Mendes, like I think Griezmann would be there to prevent Mendes to go forward too much, a bit like he did um, with helping Kunde with Dokus. It's gonna be it's gonna be great, and obviously it's Cristiano and Mbappe meeting again, which and it in itself is the romantic story of this tournament. Um, I wonder if maybe at some point you pull the emergency break and wheel out Thiago for this game uh, oh you're right I mean it's a good idea uh, the, the back three option is an interesting one it could be I yeah. wonder if Roberto has the uh, has the cojones to do that Maybe. finally the other issue with France very simply I, any issues with France yes I will tell you what the main issue is. <laughs> given the way France play yeah so if they concede first which can happen because you know I magic Ma Mike is magic but he's not Invulnerable, yep. whatever, Upamecano, you make a mistake, somebody shoots from 40 yards, a lot of individual match winners. Yeah. What does the plan become? Does the plan become put on Giroud, the very handsome Giroud, and lump balls to his head? I don't know, because then you have Barcola and Dembele on the bench. And you've got Coman, who's back from having his fourth kid right. at 28 years old. <laughs> um, you have You have Giroud a lot of fast... You have Colomani, who came on against Belgium to Colomani. make a difference. Okay, he got lucky on his goal, but at least he brings that energy. He's... He's got Deschamps' but stress. But it does become lumpo lumpo, right? Uh, well, not if he's Dembele, Barcola. If he's Giroud, maybe. But not if he's Dembele or Barcola. So what, you just bring in the back? Yeah, okay. But like, if the other team then sits deep. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, for sure. Well, what, they don't have space to run into anyway, so. True. No, that's true. I think it's going to be fascinating. I don't think right now in Deschamps' mind and the, the way he's preparing for this game. They're ever going to concede a goal. So. Well, <laughs> certainly not first. But, but we'll have to see. I think it will be very much, let's make sure we don't concede first and then try to make something happen. All right, Jules, let's break this down, strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. Now, Spain, we've mentioned defensively, it's a weakness. And it's not, and I, look, and, and I think it's not just, oh, you know, Robin Lenormand doesn't play for a big club, Emmerich Laporte disappeared to, to Saudi, Kukureya has funny hair, ha, ha, ha. It's the fact, actually, when they've played. I mean, Kukureya was maybe better in the first games, and then obviously, but then we, we saw we saw obviously we saw a bit of Grimaldo, but it's the other two. They just you shouldn't be looking vulnerable against that Georgian French yeah. team and and against Georgia. Like yeah, the Le Normand home goal is is really bad at this level. You short your feet out, and you see the ball coming from that cross from a long way. It's not like if the and ball Kukurea just doesn't shut it down either. No, but I think Nico Williams didn't help him. To be fair, uh, it's the right back that crosses the ball, and the right back should have been followed by Nico Williams. But it doesn't matter so much. It's a it was a freak of a goal, but I think you're right, a freak of a goal that shows that maybe not everything is perfect. And the fact that they haven't really been tested, although they gave chances away against Croatia in the first game, in that second half, they gave a penalty away, they gave a couple of Kovacic's chances away. Okay, against Italy, it was different. They although, what was the score at halftime against Italy? Yeah, for sure. And Calafiori's own goal was the, the difference really in yeah. the end. And I Baldi, the doesn't, Baldi says, oh, look, it's nil-nil, but we're really lucky it's nil-nil. Let me make some changes to help yeah, the yeah. team, which, of course, Paletti did not do. Not that I'm bitter about this. No, um, I know. <laughs> and then the third game, it was a B team, and they won, obviously, uh, they won 1-0. Right. But, but, yeah, so I, I think it's going to be very interesting right. to see. And for me, just on the matchup defensively, it's a bit the same for Germany because, okay, we've seen Rudiger and Tai being quite good the first two games. Then Tai missed the Switzerland game where really they were under pressure massively, Germany, in that game. And Kimmich at right back, great in possession, but against Nico Williams, this is where for me the game could be won or lost for either Germany or Spain. That, that is going to be, I think, one of the key battles to the game. I want, and I wonder how you, how you resolve that. Uh, do you get Andrich to come across and help? I mean, that would be the obvious one. 
But then this guy's already been booked in the tournament. Yeah. So there's a tendency to do that. And also, do you discombobulate your team because you're so terrified of Nico Williams' pace? I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the key, I think. And I, I was at the Bernabeu when Real Madrid played Bayern Munich in the Champions League semi-final second leg, when Vinicius literally tore apart a poor Joshua Kemish who was playing a right back and just didn't want to be there. And I just want, okay, Nico is not Vinicius, obviously, and this Spanish team is not Real Madrid, this Real Madrid version. But in one-on-one -on -one situation between a player like Vinicius or Nico with all that pace and all those skills and can go inside and outside and can do a lot of things. And Joshua Kimmich, who can do a good job at right back, but is not a right back, I think that could be quite brutal. When whether yeah. Rudiger has to come across or Andres, this would leave space somewhere else for other Spanish players anyway. Is there an issue on the other flank? <laughs> as well where I mean you happen to be wearing a La Nina Mal shirt today. Yes, indeed. Um obviously Nico's kind of stolen the headlines if mm. you will, but it's not like La Nina Mal is a schlub either. No. And again, I don't know if it's gonna be Raum or Mittestadt. Um Raum especially defensively does not excite me. I know. I know and you're right. And I think at least they are real left backs or proper left backs and proper defenders. But, but it's, it's a challenge, maybe even more than Musiala against, you know, whoever Carvajal or Le Normand, wherever he plays and pops up, or even on the other side for Germany attacking. I think, the, again, Lamine and Nico against Kimmich and Ram, because I think it would be Ram, would be huge. All right, let's talk further up the pitch. Um, in terms of, in terms of the, 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 the midfield battle, high possession, from from Spain so yeah. far, Fabian, um, Rodri, and Pedri have all looked have all looked good. Yeah. Germany have the ballers. Well, they've got two of them. The third guy's Andre, who, by the way, isn't terrible in possession. No, 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 He's no. got you know, he just kind of looks. He just kind of looks like a thug, yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> um, should you drop Gundogan deeper? Might we see something like that so he can help out? Because I don't like the idea of Tony Cross running himself into the ground, chasing around. No, you're right. But I think more, and nev more than never in this Because you're not going to get help in the build-up from the centre-backs. You can get it from Kimmich. But the only help you're going to get, if you because what you're saying about, like, oh, keep possession, right? Yeah. Assuming that's what Germany wants to do, because you could also make the argument, let's just play on the counter, right? We've got, we've got the best on earth up front. We have, yeah. uh, you know, maybe Sané speed. You know, maybe, you don't like yeah. Sané. <laughs> Musial is not a slouch either. Yeah. You know. I just wonder. You drop the start. Verts in there, like you were alluding to before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you need Verts there to get that midfield control, certainly. And then I wouldn't be surprised if at the beginning of the game, certainly they play just to be long on Havertz, just to get the ball into the Spain half, and then use their pressing to try to get the ball off Spain quite higher on the pitch. Because yeah, if they start to, I know, but if they play out from the back, like they try against Switzerland, for example, who had this very strong pressing structure in place already that we've seen against Italy too and Germany's really struggled, then I'm, I think you can invite too much trouble for you if you try to do that against this Spanish team that presses really well. And Pedri is here really just to press more than anything else almost. So I would not do that if I was Nagelsmann certainly at the start of the game. But then if you try, you've got more chances to do so if you've got Gundogan, like you said, dropping a bit deeper and all, almost having a, like a Cruz, Andrich and Gundogan midfield, even if that means Harvest is a bit isolated up front. At the start of the game, it's not a problem. Just don't, don't invite the pressure too early. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with that. I don't have an issue with Havertz being isolated. No, Dude, no, no. you've been telling us you can play center forward. You've been proving people wrong that you are a center forward. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. L look who you're up against, right? With all due respect to True. Robin and Emrick and Cuckoo.